Hello all, and welcome to this introductory video about Apache HVAC. My name is Tristan Truyens, and I will be walking you through the basics of the Apache HVAC application. To start off, I think it's important to cover some basic background about what Apache HVAC is and what role it serves in the broader VE simulation to help lay the context so that you can understand how to use the broad suite of tools that are associated with HVAC simulation going forward. Now, Apache HVAC essentially fills the gap in the dynamic heat balance map beyond load calculation. It looks at how to deal with the dynamic heating and cooling loads for each hour to assess the energy necessary to maintain the desired indoor operating conditions. It allows for the sizing of specific HVAC equipment, such as fans, pumps, boilers, chillers, etc. And it also allows for the detailed analysis of energy, cost, and carbon impact associated with design choices associated with, with mechanical equipment selection. In a nutshell, without Apache HVAC, you can't assess annual energy consumption in detail. So to understand how Apache HVAC functions, you must first have a reasonably firm grasp on how to set up a model in IESVE, including dividing that model into appropriate thermal zones, assigning internal loads and schedules to spaces, assigning appropriate envelope assemblies, as well as locating and orienting that building. Should any of these need a refresher, please watch the introductory training resources, online resources available through IES support, or refer to the appropriate sections in the online help. I can't stress enough that to fully understand Apache HVAC modeling, you will need to lean heavily on the online help that we have published. The content associated with with Apache HVAC in this online help resource is very complete and there's lots of really valuable information contained in this resource. And as with any new concept in the VE, it is always best to start small with a simple model and then layer in the complexity to build up to an actual project. There are a few very helpful tools in Apache HVAC to help get users started, particularly the systems parameters interface, the the prototype systems library and the HVAC wizard, but without a basic understanding of how the application works in general, they can be a little daunting in their own right. So as such, the intent of this first video, it's sort of like step zero. We're here to introduce you to the look and feel of the Apache HVAC environment, familiarize you with the common vocabulary associated with the simulation of HVAC systems, and present the basic architecture of how component-based HVAC simulations are created and executed. So, to start, this is the neutral Apache HVAC environment. Unlike pretty well every other application within the VE, you don't have an image of the building to assist with navigating through spaces. Now you get here by selecting Apache HVAC from the application browser, which is typically on the left of your screen. When you did this, you may have had one of a few different pop-up windows or perhaps an already populated canvas show up. So let's configure how Apache HVAC appears when we open it so that we're all working from an even footing. This is done via the preferences, which are accessed from the menu bar at the top of the screen. Select APHVAC, then preferences, and a pop-up window will open. Most of these options are fine at their default, but there are a few that I find really handy. On startup, show the most recent network file. Both the HVAC wizard and the import systems are highly useful, but are also easily launched from their icons on the toolbar. However, sometimes when you have a lot of HVAC files on the go, it's really handy to have the most recent one you were working on open up when you go back into the application. You'll also want to confirm that the checkbox on the simulation menu is selected to ensure that the current Apache HVAC file is auto-selected for sizing and simulation, as this will save some potential headaches down the line. And as you get to know the application a bit better, come back and revisit these settings to configure the environment to your specific preferences and usage. Now what the Apache HVAC application provides is a completely customizable workspace to lay out any HVAC network and allow its simulation. The way that the Apache HVAC model is linked to the rest of the model that was created via model it in Apache is through either a room or a zone object. There is slightly more functionality available when modeling using zones, but depending on the type of building or the complexity of HVAC model being made, it may not matter. Ultimately, this choice comes down to user preference. 
components. You can toggle a room to a zone and vice versa by right clicking on the component and then selecting to convert it to a room or a zone. So it's really a, a low risk assignment if you want to change later down the line. Each room or zone is assigned to a corresponding room or zone in the model that you have set up via model in Apache. This can be done manually by double clicking and selecting a space or zone from the drop down menu but is generally assigned in bulk through room or zone groups, either through the HVAC wizard or system parameters interface. We'll get there later, don't worry. The absolute minimum that you need to run a simulation with Apache HVAC is a room or zone, a connection to an outdoor air supply, as well as a connection to an exhaust, and a flow controller of some kind. I would hope that it would be fairly obvious that you can't do a lot with this model. What the Apache HVAC application does is it allows us to build up from this very simple minimum starting point into any custom HVAC network that we want to simulate. This can be done manually by selecting individual components from the toolbars at the top of the window. I will be describing each of these components in later videos, but to suffice it to say that they make up all of the necessary components that you would need to simulate any HVAC system. It's also worth noting that this first view of Apache HVAC, where we have the toolbar of components, is generally referred to as the air side, as this is where the simulation of systems that move and condition air is configured. Depending on the HVAC system you are configuring, you may also have a water side where heating water, chilled water, and condenser or heat transfer loops are simulated. The simulation of these components is also access field buttons on the toolbar and will be described in detail in later videos. The more common and recommended approach, particularly for new Apache HVAC users, is to start with a pre-made prototype system and adjust it as needed. These prototype systems exist in a library that is accessed via this icon on the toolbar. Once open, you can see that there are a variety of airside systems, waterside equipment, as well as an assortment of other prototype equipment in various configurations. For airside systems, clicking on the item in the browser list will cause a schematic version of the network to be displayed on the right of the window. A description of the item to be imported will also be displayed on the lower left of the window. This can be very useful when deciding which system will make the most suitable starting point to work from to match your project's design. I would highly advise that you take the time to click through all of the various menus of this library to familiarize yourself with what it contains as this will make working with the HVAC wizard much more intuitive. There are a couple of radio buttons on the bottom to indicate if you want to import the systems with zones or rooms, and an option to stay in the window if you are importing multiple items and don't wish to relaunch the library after each import. As you become more comfortable with Apache HVAC modeling, you may just start working directly from the library. However, when you are first using the application, the HVAC wizard can be a great help in getting your HVAC simulation started and on the right track, and I'll talk about how to do that in the next video.